Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to show you some bone meal based kelp farms. First I'm going to talk about how it works, then discuss some of the optimizations you can do to your farm, in the end show you how you can build one. Right, so here we can see a test setup that I made in order to see how high kelp can actually grow when it gets bone mealed, because that's random. So I had some observers here that would detect the kelp plant growing and would activate normal pistons and would push blocks out. After 8 hours of testing I actually got one plant that grew up to 21 high. Um, later I also asked SkyRising how it works exactly in the code and they can grow up to 25 high. But it's very unlikely that the, that, that would happen. So the way it works exactly is you bone meal the kelp here with the bone meal dispenser. It has a 100% chance to grow to the next block. Then it has a 94% chance to grow to the third block. Then it has a 94% to the power of 2% chance to grow one block higher. And so on. So 94% to the power of 3% chance, etc. So in the end, it sums up. Jell, who was also Discord chat, did the math. He said there's a 1 in 500 million chance it would actually grow up to the maximum height. You can maybe also check that. Uh, to see if it, yeah, did it right. Okay, so it's very unlikely it would actually grow that high, um, but it can happen. So if you want to make a bone meal based kelp farm, ideally the tank is 25 blocks high to provide enough space for the plant to grow, but there's pretty much no measurable difference between a 20 high or 25 high tank because it just becomes so unlikely they actually exceed that height. There's also a second factor that would influence the rates of your farm. If you would break the plant here at the second block, the rest of the plant isn't broken immediately. There's always a one tick of delay in between. So in case you would actually uh, yeah, bone meal here this twisted vine every four ticks, then there's not enough time to break the upper portion of the twisted vine um, since well, a new plant already generated again. And to a lesser degree, we also have this effect uh, with the kelp farm. I did a lot of testing to see how the cycle length would influence the efficiency of the farm. Here we got the fastest version that runs on a six tick cycle. I also tried of course with a five tick cycle but it seemed like the water didn't have enough time to spread there. You can probably artificially speed it up using dispenser with water buckets somehow but it's, not, it's probably not worth the effort. So just using a piston and one dispenser is probably as fast as it gets. So here we're getting 58,300 kelp per hour while using 12,000 bone meal. So we need two hoppers already to refill the dispenser there. So that means per unit of bone meal we get 4.85 kelp. I of course also try to get rid of the inefficiency with the kelp not being broken immediately by using more pistons. So I tried here to yeah, have a piston every second block which would give the water enough time to flow down but here we are, yeah, created more issues because some of the items were glitching out. You can probably see it, it's running it earlier, yeah, there's some kelp, kelp at the bottom. I also had to put in a second collection point here. Uh, so there were just too many issues with this design and trying to make this work somehow probably is not worth it. It's probably more efficient to build a second unit, so a second dispenser and a second piston and just run it on a yeah, slower clock instead. So here we can see the much simpler 8 tick version of the farm. It's not required to zero tick the piston here because the water could still spread fast enough. Uh, yeah, the zero tick was actually required for the 6 tick version. Also we only need a single hopper to feed the dispenser so this is much simpler. Of course the total kelp per hour we're getting here is a bit lower. Um, so in case we are activating this every 8 ticks, we're getting 45,420 kelp per hour and per bone meal we're getting 5.044. could also adjust this to run at 10 or even 12 ticks. It's still a bit more bone meal efficient, but the difference isn't that much. It's less than 1% between 8 and 12 ticks. So in case we run it at 12 ticks, we're getting 58 kelp per bone meal, but of course we're only getting 30,000 550 kelp per hour. I also tested uh, it with the 20 tick cycle just to see how it would compare and they actually got less than with 12 ticks. 
because it was within the margin of error. So probably there is no real measurable difference uh, between 12 and 20 ticks, so it's not necessary to make it any slower. This would only be beneficial if you would have two kelp plants growing higher than uh, 12 blocks in a row, which doesn't happen often enough. Just technically, the most efficient would be a 24 tick clock that would also account for two kelp plants that grow up to the maximum height uh, right after each other. But this would be so unlikely, it probably will never happen. So in case you need a really high amount of kelp power, something in the regions of over 100,000, then it's probably better to just make a tileable version and run it on a slower clock to use the higher bone meal efficiency than somehow trying to make the uh, six game tick version more efficient. So here we got a tileable version that you could either run on eight or 12 ticks. Just need to adjust the repeater here. And this one, yeah, running on eight ticks would already provide you with about 180,000 kelp per hour. So it's probably just better to make a tileable version if you need a ton of that stuff. One more detail, you might have noticed that I put the kelp on soul sand. The reason is that there's a small chance that some of the items would get stuck otherwise. So let's go back to our demo version over there that I had running for a while. If I tick warp this one a little bit, usually after a while, this happens that some of the kelp won't be collected because it can't pass the second block here where the piston punches out the water. But you can actually collect those blocks here or those items as well if you just put the kelp on top of soul sand and have a hopper below. The amount of items you would actually collect by the hopper is really low though. Uh, it's higher in case of the 6 game tick version, but with the 12 tick version it's less than 0.1% that actually is collect collected by the hopper below. As you can see, this was a couple of hours of running. We got only three stacks there while we have multiple 10,000 at the top. All right, now I'm gonna show you how you can build the farm. Let's start with the six game tick version. I think it has its place. This is the fastest total and it's just 5% less bone mill efficient than the 12 tick farm while almost producing twice the amount. All right, so let's start with the uh, soul sand. I'm gonna have a hopper below to collect the items. Then we need a dispenser and place it on the side here, facing into the kelp. In the future, then we need a piston here and a sticky piston at the bottom facing the other way. Okay, then we need a normal block that can be powered here. Here we're gonna have an observer and another sticky piston right there. Then we need another observer pointing into the sticky piston. Then we need a dispenser or dropper below the sticky piston and another observer taking an output. Then here we have a node block and we attach a lever to the side um, which we power, turn the farm off, unpower to turn it on. And here we're just gonna have another observer. All right, then here we're gonna have another observer. No block in between and observer. And I just need a block to power the dispenser here. In case you want to silence this snow block, you can also put another block on top. Right, then we need two hoppers to feed bone meal into this dispenser here. Um, I actually put in a shulker box unloader, but I can also just put down some chests here for the bone meal. Alright, let's actually put in a couple stacks so we can try it out. Then we just need some blocks to encase the tank for water. And ideally you want to make this 25 high, while 20 is pretty much just as good. If you only make it 10 high, then it's about 2% less efficient. So make this yeah, as high as you want. So I'm just going to make it this high. And here the top layer can flush uh, the items over. I would also recommend to put some blocks in the top. But of course you also need to put in water. Let's actually do that. some kelp, Let's fill it up here. So the bulk of the item items comes in here at the top and you want to hook up your storage system to it. 
some of the items but will also be collected here at the bottom hopper. Um, this is kind of optional just to get 100% of the items. Alright, then let's turn it on. So it's working. Now let's build the single 8 up to 12 ticks version. So again, a soul sand and hopper below. Then we need a dispenser on the side and a piston above. Here we have a normal block below and now we need observers. Put one here and another one facing this way. Now let's get some repeaters. Put one here and there. Get a dropper and a lever. Power it to turn it off. To adjust it, you can also set this repeater to two, and if you set two repeaters to two, then it's a 12 ticks. Okay. Then still need to power the piston. So you're just gonna add another observer, block, and node block on top of the piston. Alright, then just need some glass to add the kelp. So same applies as we did for the six tick version. Ideally you wanna build it 25 high. So water. It's kelp. And the top the water flushes the items to the side. Okay, let's also test this out really quick. Yep, it's working. Alright, then the last one we wanna build is the tileable 8 or 12 tick version. So let's start here with a line of rails, then observers on top, powering droppers. And then dispensers in front of that. In the back we're gonna have more hoppers um, to yeah, have a storage for bone meal. So you can put chests here on top. Alright, then let's continue. We also need a hopper on top of the dispensers. And we need one observer here. Then just normal blocks. We can put radius on. Then one observer for each piston. So like this. Then we can continue with the bone mill. Bone mill, uh, soul sand. Line of hoppers below. Pointing to the side here. You can also start encasing it. Get water and kelp. Place it down here. Alright, then ideally we want to make this 25 high, but 20, as I said, it's about the same efficiency. If you make the only 10 high, then it's 2% less efficient. Alright, I'm just gonna build it up a couple blocks here to show you how it works. So let's do a little fill command for the water. Because here the water placing at the top is a bit tricky. So if you want to have it nice like this, where it flushes the items to the side, you have to prepare that. So we need to place down a row of blocks there. So make this one higher. We're going to put the water source in the corner, then punch out the blocks below. Then you want to get some signs. And it's probably best if you Actually, yeah, put in water sources first and then we place down the signs so they're waterlocked. So this is actually only necessary here with the signs if you make it less than 25 high, because otherwise the kelp could, could grow up to the very top and turn the flowing water here into water sources. So the signs only necessary if you make it um, less than 25 high. Alright, then we're almost finished, just need to put it in the clock, so we just need a repeater here on two ticks for the eight tick clock at server in front and a sticky piston and then can you then you can turn it on the lever here the back of the piston okay all it needs is just some bone meal let's fill it in Then 
it should be working. Yeah, it's actually quite fast. So who needs Zerotix farms if you have that? Dealio also want to put some blocks here above. But everything stays inside. Alright, that's all for the day. Thanks guys for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye!